All right, when the boss comes in, you got to give him a moment. All right, take two. The party bus. What in the heck is the party bus? For those not familiar with the channel, uh, we have the Lumbering Battlement is our bus. This card, along with multiple copies of itself or the card Hostage Taker, allows us to generate a loop, which gives us an unlimited number of Enter the Battlefield triggers, which we can use to gain a bunch of life and draw a bunch of cards with Elite Guard, gain a bunch of life and make our opponent discard a bunch of cards with Bellhaunt, literally kill our opponent three points of life at a time with Vampire Sovereign or draw cards with Flibbit and Dusk Legion Zealot. Past that, we just have some Esper interactive pieces such as Thought Erasure and Mortify. And I've added uh, I've added the bus's mechanic here. Teferi's going to kick things into high gear for us. This card's just very good in the format in general. He, uh, he slows down and disrupts a lot of things. He bounces your opponent's stuff. But notably, he can bounce our stuff as well. So we can return our Enter the Battlefield creatures to our hands. So we can play them out again. JW, thanks for the five-month resub. I would like to address the comment in chat about Spark Double and other clone effects. So Mirror Image was playable last season in this deck. The way clone effects work in Magic the Gathering, when you have a clone under the bus and you blink the bus, the clone can't copy the bus or anything that was underneath them when it comes into play. So it does not work out well for you. Yeah, the sideboard's been updated. The deck list on your screen is updated as always. I've got a couple of Narsets in the sideboard. Was the big change. Could a version of the bus with Flippet and New Jace be a reliable combo kill? You know, that's actually kind of an interesting idea. The mana base would need to be retooled to make Jace be castable. Because I only have 15 blue in my mana base currently. You want closer to 18 to 19 to cast the new Jace. But that's a fun idea. Alright, right off the bat, we're going to get some action off of Time Raveler here, it looks like. Simic, Simic pile of poop. Appears to be the first opponent. Those are sweet basics. Man, Wizards of the Coast, basic land changer win, please. <laughs> Did you really draw sabotage for the turn? Magic sucks sometimes. <laughs> <sighs> This is, that's true. We've been streaming for seven and a half hours. I think this is the first time we've played against Reclamation today. It's like glass, glass half full. Hey, the Bugmaster. Real, real jobs after college are a good time. The biggest change for me personally when I graduated college is I was someone who always worked 30 to 4 hours. 40, 30 to 40 hours a week while going to school. So like, once I was suddenly done going to school, I had like copious amounts of free time. It's like, weird. I only work now. All the Reclamation players must be mythic already. That's that's the real hot take. All, all the Reclamation players are already out of diamond. We just, we just barely got diamonds. We've been playing against other Platinum. We were playing against Platinum people all day. Everybody, everybody's been playing Reclamation. They coasted their way on up. Do 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 do
What's the better builder reclamation, teamer or simic? Asking for a friend. The answer is it depends on what you're playing against. So against like Thief of Sanity and Legion War boss, um, teamer is much better. From a, just a pure race standpoint, as a as a pure pure combo deck, the blue green deck is a better just linear combo deck that's not trying to interact. All right, they're through two reclamations, which means they only have four copies of Tamio and two more reclamations in their deck to draw to. There's only one more white source in my deck than blue source. So Justicar's Portal versus Siren's Ruse in terms of being easy to cast is really pretty marginal. I don't think that's a relevant point really. How do you explain this phenomenon? Well, you see the way magic tournaments work is when blue-green reclamation is the most represented deck in the room the decks that have good matches against blue-green reclamation are the ones that actually top eight and do well in the tournament so the reason why there was a bunch of mono red in the top eight and not wilderness reclamation is because the mono red players got to devour the wilderness reclamation players When you, when you metagame a tournament successfully, it doesn't mean you're playing the best deck. It means you're playing the deck that beats the best deck. You want, you want to be playing the deck that's good against what a majority of the people are playing. Lumbering Battlements here is kind of funny because it gets to pick up all our four drops, which this Blast Zone was going to try and kill. Everybody on the bus. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And then, even if they fog us again next turn, I get to hostage take her the bus, which is going to give me all these into the battlefield triggers, which is sweet. And if I, if I draw, so like, I've got three draws underneath here plus my draw step so if i draw another hostage taker plus a land in these four draws we combo them yeah they elected not to tick the zone up which is interesting all right they found land as kanta nexus so we might not get another turn spell weaver thanks for the 14 months they left the card on top i only assume that means we're not getting another turn I'm going to concede if they take a turn here. I don't think Dean of Iteration solves any problems that we have is what it comes down to. Of all the problems this deck could have, I don't think Dean fixes any of them. It's just like not really worth playing. Huh. What do I actually cut here? Our main deck doesn't really have a lot of cards that are bad in this matchup. Like Siren's Ruse isn't great. Do I want to trim Hostage Taker? Its effect isn't good. But, like, it helps us combo kill. I guess Kai is probably not good enough. Mm. 
Yeah, maybe maybe I just trim the hostage takers. Yeah, like so again, remember it's not just like I, I that's what I'm saying, Tom. All these cards have text. It's just like which ones are the best is what it comes down to. They could have creatures post board though. A lot of these decks board into creatures. And again, people are talking about Mortify. What am I supposed to cut, chat? Don't just... Sideboarding is is, is a one-to-one -one process. I get it. Most of our cards look good. Maybe, maybe we just trim all this bottom end filler and we become less... A little bit less redundant. Like leave in... Leave in a couple of combo pieces and a couple of Mortifies. I guess that doesn't seem unreasonable. I'd cut the five drop. No, Vampire Sovereign is how we actually kill them when we combo. Yeah, maybe maybe Bell Haunt comes out. The nice thing about Bell Haunt is if we get the so like the thing is. This combo is super convoluted, you have to remember. So our combo not only requires three pieces, but it also needs something else to get going with it. So, like, Bell Haunt not only gives us a bunch of life, but it empties their hand out when we combo. And they do, they do have oozes. So they're bringing creatures in against us, which probably means I want all of the hostage takers. It's probably the reasonable answer. Driving a bus through Groundhog Day, that's the spatch up. Now I think Ashiok's much worse than just playing something like Kaya Mega Vega. Like, just randomly exiling their graveyard's not very good. Also, the fact that Ashiok mills cards off the top of their deck means you thin their deck to Nexus faster, so they actually combo combo more readily. Hey, Solbet, thanks for the four months. Welcome back. Do we shut down Azkanta or Tamiyo here? I don't know. It depends on which one they play. <coughs> Tuck this under my hostage taker. A little bit. How does Ashiok milling Nexus work? Nexus goes back into their deck. And again, one of the 800 different ways they could have templated Nexus of Fate better is they could have just had it be not be a replacement effect and they could have had it been a trigger you could respond to or just a million other things. And they just didn't do any of it. And decided to leave it rancid. So, based on the suggestions, how people are, like, going through, puzzling out, trying to figure out how we want a sideboard, a lot of people seem to be forgetting the fact that you have to actually kill the opponent. Like, it's super appealing. A lot of people, in my experience, like to knee-jerk into... Well, we'll just put in all this disruption and never actually kill them. When in reality, that's not a winning game plan. You can't just like sit there and disrupt them because they have four copies of Tamiyo and they have four Wilderness Reclamation, all these other things that allow them to have an absurd amount of redundancy in their deck. It's not just disruption that beats the opponent's deck. It's disruption plus a clock.
a knee jerk. It's like when the doctor taps you on the on the knee with the thing and your leg jerks up. It's completely decent. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the good news is it's actually not even their nexuses I'm worried about at this point, right? It's their it's their biogenic oozes that potentially pose an issue. Actually, we're kind of in a good a good place to kill them here, right? So if they play an ooze, I mortify it, then I untap Tefri, bounce the token, hit them to two, and then I have Tefri locking them down. Would playing Little Tef there have been an option? Why? What's the appeal of playing Little Tef? Blast Zone's on three. And I can Spyglass Blast Zone next turn. So I don't think that's super relevant. Because if they do this, I get to negate them. I think we've got them. That exactly that means wild growth walker feel free to submit any things you might want to submit through the forum and i'll always respond there and let you know sure and i'm i'm responding to your question your question with the question half wing instead of me telling you your line is right or wrong i'm telling i'm asking you to say why it would be a good thing to do what you're suggesting So my, my, your, I'm responding to your question with a question. Maybe duress isn't good enough. I definitely have too many cards in my sideboard for the Nexus matchup right now. So that needs to get fixed after this. Hand's got a lot of good in it. Run some lands off here. Perfect. How does his hand get better? Thought Erasure on two. Double negate blink of an eye. <sighs> So you're gonna name Tamio here. Cause Tamio Tamio helps um 
helps them flip the search. Because I don't think Duress is better than any of the other cards I have in my deck currently. I think I have too much disruption and not enough ways to actually kill my opponent. So rather than continuing to overload on things like Duress and Thought Erasure and Mortifies and stuff like that, I want to put in more ways that actually allow me to win the game. And I think because I have disruption, because I have disruption in my sideboard that I'm not bringing in here, that probably means my sideboard is constructed incorrectly and I should cut, like, if duress isn't good here, I should probably cut it from my sideboard. Yeah, the spy glasses are to name Azcanta or Tamio. In this case, I elected to name Tamio because I think it's the bigger threat. And, like, they know I know about these negates, but I don't have any discard spells, so I just need to, like, play through them. Hostage Shaker is actually a good rip here, because it means if they stick and ooze next turn, I can take it away from them. How the game's been good. This is actually the first reclamation matchup we've played in almost eight hours of streaming today. All right. So would I rather Time Raveler resolve or D Spark? I think I'd rather Time Raveler resolve, right? So I'm gonna lead on D Spark targeting this. Draw another counter spell. Not I'm no goodness. Excellent I've got We're not in a great spot, but here we are. All right, that's a cow. So we're hoping we're hoping to draw a thought erasure here. Yeah, that might be that might be the line. Swap the spyglass with the hostage taker. I can see that. This is still this is still one more turn off of flipping those, so. I wonder what they drew, because they paused to confirm what this is on. I think they were thinking about flipping this. Narset is really good against Beamkin. You're not wrong. Alright. So we're dead. Got it. I have no idea, Luke. Maybe... The problem is I don't actually have that much that much disruption in my main deck either, so I feel like I need both, which probably just means the matchup is bad. Well, they topped with Opt, but they also didn't take an extra turn, so it's like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. I think I start with this and see where we go from there. Major counter spell. That's probably what they topped with the opt. They 
E. Teach, thanks for the six months. Welcome back. For keeping me around. Yeah, we're probably dead from here. If they take a turn here, I'll concede. We're not guaranteed dead, but we're dead enough. That is bad television. It's already bad television. It's guaranteed bad tele worse television if they uh if they go from here. Well, they didn't snap it off, so do I get another turn here? All right, the fact that we got a turn here. can't beat this card though, right? They are going to play the ooze. Oh, the vampire does fly. That's true. And I'm at 22. Wow. Okay. All right, huh. Okay, deal. Tilt, tilt. See, Drano lives on in spirit, yeah, exactly. If they have an extra turn spell here, Were we supposed to leave the guard mages in the air because they were lethal next turn with the vampire? Yeah, I think you're right. I think I agree with your assessment that I should have not taken the guard mages. I I just wasn't thinking about Biogenicus. I just assumed if, if they were going to be stopping themselves from dying, they were going to fog me. Uh, this is our first match. We've been playing for about 20 minutes. Please, please kill my bus. Well, if this isn't a counter spell and they draw a couple of blanks, we might be okay. So yeah, so we, we'd have killed them this turn if I would have left these in play, which is worth noting. It's a good catch. They do have this draw two here. And if they draw into a blink of an eye, we're probably dead. And by a blink of an eye, I mean there's a blink in here already. So they could also draw Tamio and kill us. So there's a lot of ways that this doesn't end well for us. Which I guess to be fair is probably why they came as inside last turn. Cards in their deck. Uh, 29. I guess even just them drawing Reclamation is also, or Nexus of Fate is also not good for us. Why does Blink kill us? Because it bounces Spyglass. And if they bounce Spyglass, we're not going to get another turn. Uh...
I mean, they might just have a Nexus of Fate here and it just doesn't matter. They could, they could just have Nexus of Fate and it doesn't matter. That, that's likely what we're experiencing here. There's like, make a thing, cast Nexus, untap next turn. Nope, alright. Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure. Take the bait. All right, whatever. I quit. Whatever. 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 Just. I guess. I guess. Like we punted to start because, like, I should have. I should have like left the other two flyers out. We found. We found the line. I just. You know, we found, shh, we found the line. All right, so let's do a sideboarding lesson because uh, I built this sideboard poorly. Let's talk about how we can figure that out. So um, if I look at this deck and I, and I think about how do I want to board against Wilderness Reclamation, I was realizing I have too many cards in my sideboard currently, it feels like, for the Reclamation matchup. It's like at a glance... If we bring in all the cards in my sideboard right now that look like they're kind of good against Wilder's Reclamation, like they have text and they're good, it's like this many cards, right? It's like 11 cards in my sideboard that could possibly be good here. But now, if I like look at the actual cards in my deck and I think about, well, what do I actually want to cut here? I feel like I have too many cards basically that are good in this matchup. So let's say I want to get rid of these. Because one one's for one, they don't block meaningfully, and the extra draw isn't super meaningful. Same with Siren's Ruse, they don't really need the extra blink in this matchup. I think I need to keep this like stuff at my top end here as kind of like a core, a core of my deck, basically. So like I have ways to actually attack and block, and like I have a way to combo kill them should it come up. Hey, bit employed. Thank you for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Is Narsec great? Do we have enough spells? So I have 6, 13, and like 21 hits for her right now, which I think is plenty. Also, remember, Narset's not coming in as a way to find my hate. Narset is coming in as a way to um Narset's coming in as a way to stop them from drawing cards, right? That's that's why she's there. She's mainly in the sideboard to stop them from drawing. You think you'd rather have one ones that draw a card than Bell Haunt? You think so? Yeah, I guess I guess Bell Haunt is pretty bad against Tamio. So if I leave the Flibbits in, I look like that. I don't think Kai is quite good enough. And maybe I just like so last time I didn't board in the Duresses and like I trim trim a D Spark. Like look, I look like this post board. That's fair, Bob. So something something like this doesn't seem unreasonable. And I think, again, if I'm not going to be boarding the duresses in, in this matchup, that probably means I just don't want them in my sideboard. So they could probably afford to be something else that's like better against aggro or something like that. Yeah, that's fair. Second D-Spark over third flip it. Okay, so basically I just wanted to like look at that. And that's the way people have to ask about how do you go about sideboarding. And I really think enough people don't think about their sideboard plans outside of the matchups that they're playing in. Because that's really how you should be figuring out what goes in there. You should be going over your ins and outs. And if your ins and your outs in a lot of matchups don't line up well, that means your sideboard's not constructed correctly. It means you have too many cards for a specific matchup and not enough for some others. I'm gonna put an Ugin in here because that seems good against control. And I'm gonna leave an extra Kai in here because that's good against aggro. The rest of this seems fine. 
I guess I can put a cast down in instead of the second Kaya. Because green red aggro is kind of annoying. The Narset Powers deck was sweet. We uh, we got to do our combo a couple of times. And ultimately, it ended up just being a very good Esper Planeswalker deck. Uh, Flibbit cannot be cast from our library. We're literally just playing him as a blue 1-1 one, one draw card for two. That's, that's why he's there. So if I keep this on top, I could guarantee Thought Erasure on two. But I think because I'm on the play, I'd rather just do this on three and bottom the land for now. <laughs> Matt Robbins, thanks for the prime support. Hey, I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Adidas, been watching for about a year, decided to get back into playing. I blame you. Well, thank you. Thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we have a plan, huh? I'm going to get this death free down now. I think I'm also going to go ahead and... Do I want to bounce something with this right away? No, nah, I'm just going to plus for now. Because they might play Reclamation out next turn. And if they play it out, I can bounce it and then Thought Erasure them. I am at a free loss. And you know, actually, I think because I just have this going for now, I'm just going to go ahead and play this and get some pressure, pressure going. That's true. Dealing with Phoenix is annoying. I've got it. I've got it. Well, that's that's an extra reclamation and they have they have Tefri getting killed by blast zone here what do you think is the best deck to climb the best of three ladder with I mean mono red not close never never not mono red Uh, Nexus of Fate is only banned in best of one. So in best of best of three, the rest of us still have to suffer through it. In fact, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna re here. We're at a we're at a free win where we're at on the ladder. I'm just gonna go ahead and move along. Yeah, we should we should count our lucky stars, right? Like we hadn't played it all day. We hit two in a row. Let's move along. All right, mono white. Seems a little slow against mono white. Hoping to draw some a cheap spell to play on turn two or three. No Turkin. That would not be competitive. I'm done. I'm past the point in my life where we play decks that are unplayable in modern. We're going to play modern. They're going to be good decks. Modern. Modern's barely fun playing good decks. Getting beat up playing trash decks is not enjoyable in my opinion. Just can't do it anymore. Well, we're hoping to draw a two drop here. Probably going to be too slow. <laughs> I guess that's technically a two drop. Unfortunately, they know we're likely not Esper Control because of the Memorial to Folly, but feels bad, man. Mm. 
I guess Defrey's not very good here, huh? I think blue-eyed aggro is great. There are there are a variety of decks that can beat Reclamation. Reclamation is by no means overbearing, as the open this past weekend showed. The problem is that like if you don't if you don't enjoy playing against Reclamation, the types of games it generates are extremely tedious and take a long time. Uh, I have not Brewski. As always, everything I play goes up on my website and my YouTube channel. You can always check there. I think the fact that the upcoming Mythic Championship that's standard best of three on Arena is going to be standard best of three, they might ban Reclamation for that tournament because I think with Wizards pushing Arena and like trying to get like the Hearthstone crowd and stuff into Magic, I think it looks bad to new players that decks like that sit there and take all the turns away. Vonay, thank you for the 2 month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So we're keeping me around. Yeah, yeah, you basically have to pick between like killing your opponent by turn four or playing blue cards in the format, it feels like. Some there's some fringe exceptions to that, like Abzan Hero is okay against it just because it plays an absurd amount of interaction, but it's still not great. I think I remember reading when they were testing the London Mulligan that if it was going to get put into production, it would be with Corset at 20. I don't, I don't have a source on that. That's just from memory, so that might not be accurate. He looks so good in full art. Look at him. He's so scared, chat. No, it's the summer set, Bob. Should drop in June, June or July. It's May, June, July. It's July, July or August. End of July, early August, somewhere in there. Yeah, Bob. Magic's magic standard format goes between always goes between uh goes to eight sets. When the eight set or is the ninth set? Yeah, it's the when the ninth set would come in, the oldest four rotate. Magic standard goes from five sets to nine sets, or five sets to eight sets. Is the release July twelfth, or is that pre release weekend? I need to mark those on my calendar so I know when I have to work extra. <laughs> well, I mean, every... Every season, there's every year there's a set a point with eight sets in it, Chewie. This is this is the norm and to be expected. Yeah, Horizons is nothing to do with standard. That comes out in June. Man, they're gonna have a lot of. Uh, they're are they gonna they're gonna risk burning people out, right? We have like May. It's like May, June, July set releases like one, two, three. Hey, Brewski, thank you for the tier two and welcome back. And I would be happy to bump up the tier two on dealer's choice. Kai is okay here. I need uh, the fact that I burned a cast down and then they had to cut Leonor guard feels real bad. So like my hand just doesn't have text now.
Uh, restricted lists are confusing and bad. Explaining, explaining to new players how restricted cards works is really difficult. Not, and should not be the norm. Also, the other thing, yes, that's the other thing. As someone who's played Vintage, restricting cards creates a higher variance format, not a more enjoyable one. It's just like, oh man, they got lucky and found their thing and now I'm dead. We're kind of dead here, right? Uh, you wrote down eight things and then said that's nine sets, Chewy. Because they replay the Takatli the following turn and there's nothing I can do about it. So, sure, sure, chat, I get, like, dude, are you, like, I feel like I've gone somewhere else. So, sure, I could bounce the Honor Guard and play a Hostage Taker and then kill a token. But then they replay an Honor Guard, and I'm in the exact same board as if I bounce a token, except they just have to pay two mana to put the Takotli back into play. So, I'm, like, right back in the same shit creek place that I was before. It's like, you're right, those are, like, legal plays. But, like, it still doesn't get me out of the we can't win, right? It still doesn't get me out of the no answer to Dakotli and then, like, another hostage taker and a 3-4 in my hand that don't do anything. Like, staring down the barrel of a bunch of a bunch of 2-2s that are turning into 4-3s for the next two turns. Magic, magic's not about just, like... One of, the, one of the ways you can ladder faster is by being able to, like, look ahead and realize, like, all right, what does my actual game plan look like? You're not, you don't need to not just be worried about how do you beat the board. You need to be able to construct a plan in your head for how you actually win in the long term. So, like, what, is, what does the game look like three turns from now that, like, I can actually construct a winning state? Like, what, what are the series of plays that need to happen for that to happen for me? We could see them floop the bird back into play this turn and kill my Tefri. If that happens, we'll probably hostage shaker the bird next turn. Hope to dodge a lava coil. Well, they. Oh! They. This shuts off finale. Oh, that's so good! Oh, man. That. You can only cast spells when you can cast an instant or sorcery. Yep. Yep. Definitely hard counters that one. That is, in fact, how magic works. Leave it in versus Phoenix. Yep. That's everything I wanted in life. Hey, Dan, and thank you for the very generous tier three resub. I appreciate the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Gosh, little Tef is just like so randomly relevant in so many places. He's just like, by the way, get wrecked. So for people that weren't maybe looking at the screen, Little Tef stops you from casting the spells with Finale of Promise. 
That's the interaction I was marveling at. No, I am not making this up as I go. Do I mortify this? They probably get the bird back even if I don't mortify this, but it does slow them down a little bit. The updated list was great. I'm going to change the last list in my stream decker. It's going to be updated on my website after I'm done today. Yeah, save so have a second bird here. I might be able to race them with Vampire Sovereign. They have a third bird. We're probably dead, though. All right, just two burbs. Yeah, I agree. Doom Doom Whisperer really feels like one of the missing pieces of the puzzle. When your auger misses and your mono can trip deck. Yep. I'm gonna block here. If they have a shock, they can finish my guy off, but they're almost at the end of their the end of their hand here. And this uh this bell haunt should hopefully make it difficult for them to get their bird back next turn. And then like, even just getting rid of a land here is still good because that land was going to jumpstart this radical idea. And if they don't get their bird back next turn, I get to play another bell haunt, which means I likely don't get their bird back the following turn. Although Op's a pretty good draw here. Op just means they need one more instant or sorcery. Because Radical Idea does its thing. Wow, okay. I'm all tingly. Or I'm all, it might just be static. I'm all tingly. It might just be static. Storms are like a symphony. And I am a great conductor. All right. It's another bottom. Lucky shot. Back up to nineteen. Take the last card out of your hand. It's a little bit close. We're definitely. We definitely could use a little bit more mana. The fact Y'all that he's going up to five here big is a big deal because it means the auger bullet. I guess if I hostage take her the auger, I can kill Rail next turn, which is appealing. They hit an exceptionally lucky streak here. They could get their bird back, which would be a little worrisome. That probably means they're getting their bird back. They have to brick twice more here, which is unlikely. Yep, lava coil. Those are lightning, sure. The wizard lightning auger plan is neat. It's an interesting direction to take the deck. It's super aggressive. Um, if I draw the Drain Vampire next turn, we could maybe stay in this. That puts me to four and gives me a Flying Blocker. Pretty unlikely if they don't have the Shock, though. Nurse, that's great. D-Spark's great. Kaya's fine. 
Trim Dusk Legion, Trim Ruse. Need one more cut here. Mortify's not amazing. Actually, Mortify's probably worse than Cast Down, huh? They don't have any enchantments. They don't have any legendary creatures. Tef, Bounce, Bell, Haunted, Replay. Well, that, that doesn't keep me alive, Greg, because I was going to one. And Bell Hunt only puts me up to, uh, up to four. Twitch dark mode is the superior Twitch mode. If you're not on dark mode, you should toggle it. Toggle it. It's a huge life changing. No, I only had six lands in play. Smart on their part to burn Charter Course right away. You know, honestly, it might be right just not activate her. She doesn't have a ton of hits in my deck, so just mostly just having her sit there as a way to uh, prevent them from drawing cards is ideal. Cannot see your folly. Let's see if we can really get rolling here. It's really been a, been a rough set. I think this might be the last one of the day, the last deck of the day. I, uh... Zoptic, thank you for the 9-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I had forgotten. I agreed. I was going to be on... A friend's, uh, our friend of a friend's Twitch channel tonight. They're doing, uh, they're doing like a magic podcast type thing. We're going to be playing Arena. Or he's going to be playing Arena while we chat and stuff. So, if you want to see me, I'll be on again later this evening tonight on this other, this other Twitch channel. I should take the Nullhide Ferox, right? That's the one I want to take. This guy has this series where I guess he talks to different people from various games as like overviews and stuff for them. He's a he's a friend of a friend, a guy I used to uh, do content for a long, long time. I was just getting started, so I'm gonna be over there this evening. A 
Well, we're not casting Thought Erasure this turn. That's a 3-3 three, three land of War Elf. Listen, as someone who's absent-mindedly taken the Ferox more than once, I can't really judge people. Yeah, I'll ping on Discord. Alright, I have gain 10 draw card here. Nope, JK. Alright, uh, yikes. Cast down, D spark. Hope for the best. Okie doke. Lead on Glacial Fortress here, obviously, because Swamp will not bring it into play untapped. Uh, probably just the Vivians, right? Ski, thank you for the three month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, if you look at the account underneath, I actually had never seen that Twitter account before. Um, if you look at the show that the things a part of is part of a bigger group, if you look at like the the hearth hearth home or whatever it's called underneath it. They've got like forty thousand people on Twitter. So you're right. The tw the tweet I just linked is to a smaller account. It's been, it's been a while since I've done a podcasty type thing. I like doing them on occasion. So we'll take a hit here, probably. I assume this 5-4 is going to come down with haste. Probably hostage taker that. Hope to fade like lightning striker lava coil or whatever here for a bit. Yep, yeah, they do. They do good stuff, Waffle. They started uh, this week. All right, so we get smacked for four here, but then I'm going to have a five four to block them. So I think we're like solidly en route to stabilization here, huh? In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this and then play this out so we can go on the, the offense here quickly and close up. Elite Guard Mage and Hostage Shaker showing they're just like reasonable magic cards on their own. Yeah, ever ever since Twi so Twitch previously I used to be able to like left click on people's names and then left click to give them a sword. One more time, now I have to like actually type to give people swords. It's way more work. Smush. On the scoreboard. Better Twitch TV. You know, I had that extension installed at one point, and then 
when I rebuilt my rig, I never reinstalled it. It probably does add stuff like that back in. It didn't really do much that I needed, but adding something like that back in would probably be useful. Yeah, the fact that the bus doesn't have trample is just like a constant lag. They put trample on every flying creature, but my giant bus that animals ride around on doesn't. Come on now. What's the deal? As to Noth. Well, why don't you just spell it that way? As to Noth. That's not how that's spelled. That's not that's not how your username is spelled at all. When I become the party bus CEO and not just the driver, I'll give it triple. The dance a little bit slow on the draw, but I've got all my colors. I've got like removal spell, removal spell, like pseudo bomb, so bomb. Three, four, five. Although, obviously, we're not going to play this on five if we have this on two. So, the real question here is do I mortify their creature or their rhythm? I think I just kill the rhythm here. Makes my sorcery speed removal like hostage shaker a bit better if I'm not having to like take a chunk to the face before I kill their thing. He says as he takes a chunk to the face from a haste creature. All right, well, they don't have. Removal for this hostage taker. Next turn I get to go like shock land, thought erasure, plus play this out as a 4-4. Obviously not blocking here because I don't want to give them this back. here but next turn so I've got I've got good blocks this turn and next turn I get to vampire sovereign back up to nine or six if they smash in but if they attack they're like trading two of their things for this but this this does position them to like rip a spell breaker and kill us here What on God's green earth was that menu? Why, why did that come up? All right, sweet. And drawing another one of these should mean we're good to go here. They played, they played a crawl harpooner and then the client bugged. It's a conspiracy chat. It's a conspiracy. Sweet, look at that. Gonna keep on rolling. Do 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 I always knew my bus was a planeswalker at heart. I always knew my bus was a planeswalker at heart. Triggers. Excellent, excellent. Five mana flying siege ran out, still busted. Oh, that was kind of a, it's kind of a rough set. I don't know. No, that's probably fine.
I'm still muted and I just said a bunch of stuff. Sorry. Um, um, so I need to play more matches with this, uh, with, uh, Time Reveler. And I'm not quite sure if, uh, Narset is good enough in the sideboard or not. Someone had made the good suggestion of, like, maybe we just want to be more proactive against Nexus of Fate. And I think there's a very real possibility that that's the case. Like, we have so much disruption, but we just had, like, a tough way closing the game out. That perhaps just, like, getting four Thief of Sanity into the 75 is where we want to be. Just because, like, the party bus plan is not good there. Like, the party bus plan is, like, reasonable against aggro, and it's decent against mid-range, but Thief of Sanity could really help, like, our control matchup, for instance, too. So maybe, like, where I, where I ultimately want to end up at is something that looks closer to... Something that looks, like, closer to this. I could see something like, like this being reasonable. Yeah, and I think, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and throw this up on the site like this, just because I do think more pressure out of the sideboard is probably the answer. At any rate, that's going to be it for me for today, folks. I will catch all y'all, all y'all around uh, later. Remember, I am going to be doing a thing on uh, this other stream this evening that's linked in this Twitter status here. It's going to start about 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, which those of you who might be time zone challenged, that's four and a half hours uh, from now. Um, I'll be live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for my normal normal stream here with Modern into a bunch more standard here at Magic Arena. And I'll catch you all around soon. Everybody uh, have a good one. For those of you that prefer to stay here on Twitch, supposed to check out some of my YouTube stuff. I'll find someone to give a host to here real quick. Hey, D9 is on. Let's send y'all over his way.